Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Mavelis and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are going to be doing a very brief, or rather I'm going to be doing a very brief touch on my reading of Adam Cat by uh, Osamu Tezuka. Going into this book I didn't know what to expect pretty much at all because as some of you will have noticed I'm in the midst of a lot of manga series and since I'm trying to only do like an initial view review and then like a conclusionary review that means that I while I'm reading steadily through like Princess Jellyfish and some other series uh, there isn't as much to talk about in the manga review videos. But I was like oh um need a one shot, that would be helpful. Combine it with the fact that Osamu Tezuka is um, one of those mangaka that you kind of always hear about and think you should probably read at some point and stuff. And I had read some of the Buddhist stuff previously like way back in the day. So I was like, oh, I should definitely pick up Adam Cat. And, and I am kind of glad I did. Um, overall, I feel like this work, which was originally published in 1987, so not that long ago, has not really aged very well, particularly um, in uh, who knows what the Japanese context as opposed to the American context was at that point, blah, etc, etc, etc. I'm an SJW, blah dee da dee da But to just start at the beginning, I did think that the premise for the book was really hilarious and really promising, creative, interesting, especially in how it kind of references some other works by a Tezuka and refreshes it in all sorts of ways and that that did seem like an interesting thing to do um, and the whole idea of Adam Cat um, coming into being because he dies and the aliens are like oh we must revive this creature so that the boy and his cat will not realize well, we have that we killed them by accident and are here um, but then they mistake the boy's memories of a robotic cat for his memories of his actual cat and then make his cat a superhero cat so that that is amusing and i guess one of the random things that has literally probably nothing to do with actual reality um is the fact that the bully in the book is named Gaddafi. so that was weird because the only other person i know is like momar Gaddafi. so not that i know that many people in this world, but it was just really strange uh, to have this random name show up, seemingly, at least in my context. Part of this book that really, really did not age very well was the like really strict gender roles that were going on and kind of the toxic masculinity throughout. The main boy character does cry a surprising amount, which could have been uh, refreshing, <laughs> but the fact that Adam Cat is always telling this uh, his owner, companion, boy, identified person to uh, grow a backbone and be a man. It, it kind of diffuses any any interesting things that could have happened around male tears. There's also especially one story in particular that involves a super rapey cat. Not Adam Cat. He's the white knight nice guy TM cat. Um, and then there's also of course a damsel cat. If I never have to read another book that involves a super rapey cat ever again, uh, it will probably be too soon. Uh, that was just bizarre, strange, not great. Um, so yeah, as I said, it was interesting. I guess the cherry on top of the cake, as it were, was the fact that the book itself concludes with a really badly worded apology for the racial caricatures that I guess Tezuka probably used again and kind of trying to explain it away as satire and of his time and stuff and obviously he is dead so I not being a expert on Tezuka it does seem fairly logical that there are limited options here but it just in the era of like, dissecting what a good apology is and stuff this just seemed like a really really clueless apology um, and I assume that it was published in all of Tezuka's work, perhaps in this edition or what I've have you. The rapey cat may have been a racial stereotype of some kind. Um, I'm not an expert in um, racial caricatures, uh, especially in Japan as they may apply to other um, Asian countries. But yeah, the fact that this was such like a sexist work um, and not so much to my perspective at least a racist work uh, it kind of 
just made it seem all the more clueless, the fact that uh, this badly worded apology was applying to nothing that I had just read. That said, if um, you can direct me towards any um, essays or <laughs> about race in manga, uh, that would be great. Because yeah, I don't know that much about it. Um, not having much luck on Google so far, but I haven't tried hard enough. So try harder, as it were. Anyway, so I will see you all next time. Bye. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13, also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.